Hello and welcome to my next video on lattice enthalpy. So as you can see here I've listed down all the types of enthalpy you need to know. I'm firstly going to run through all the definitions. So lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change that accompany, um, accompanies the formation of one mole of ionic compound from its gaseous ions under standard conditions. These are just you just need to learn from the book. Enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements. The enthalpy change of atomization is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of gaseous atoms forms from the element in its standard state. First ionization, first ionization energy is the enthalpy change accompanying the removal of one electron from each atom in one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous one plus ions. The second ionization energy is the enthalpy change accompanying the removal of one electron from each ion in one mole of gases one plus ions to form one mole of gases two plus ions. The first electron affinity is the enthalpy change accompanying the addition of one electron to each atom in one mole of gases atoms to form one mole of gases one minus ions. And the second electron affinity is the enthalpy change accompanying the addition of one electron to each ion in one mole of gaseous one minus ions form one mole of gaseous two minus ions. I'm going to go through each of these individually. Oh, and uh, sorry, forgot the last two. Enthalpy change of solution is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of a compound is completely dissolved in water. And the enthalpy change of hydration is the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of isolated gaseous ions is dissolved in water, forming one mole of aqueous ions under standard conditions. So let's start off with lattice enthalpy. Now this is due with when an ionic lattice is formed, and you can see the example. So sodium plus chlorine, both in a gaseous state, form one mole of sodium chloride. That's the important thing. So you want one mole of the solid ionic lattice formed from its um, elements, or ions rather, in their gaseous state. And we'll look a little bit more at lattice enthalpy at the end. Well, I once have gone through the whole list. Every change of formation is when you get a compound forming from one mole of its elements in their standard state. So here we've got the same ionic lattice forming, sodium chloride, but this time it's formed from sodium, which is naturally found as a solid, and chlorine, which is naturally found as a gas, but it's also found it impairs its diatomic, so you have half Cl2 to get you just one Cl atom. Atomization, now that is when you just turn a we just turn something from a solid to a gas so sodium in its solid state is turned into a gas ionization energy now you should be familiar with the next well, ionization energy from as so you have sodium will then lose an electron it's ionized so you remove that one electron so it becomes a plus this is in gaseous state uh, second ionization energy is when it loses a second one. So in this case, magnesium already lost one electron, then loses uh, another electron, become Mg2+, plus, plus 2e-, minus. make sure the charge is balanced. Electron affinity is when you add an electron to something. So oxygen, add an electron, becomes O-. minus. Second electron affinity, you uh, add a second electron, becomes 2-. minus. Solution is when you fully dissolve a whole um, structure in water or aqueous conditions so here we have sodium chloride it's, you add aq or aqueous and it completely dissolves to form um, sodium ions and chloride ions in aqueous conditions hydration is exactly the same but happens to just one so in this case just a sodium ion which is a gas will then be um, hydrated to form sodium ion but in aqueous conditions now the enthalpy charges that enthalpy is always exothermic. Formation is usually exothermic. It can be um, positive, it's usually endothermic rather, but it can be exothermic. Atomization, always um, endothermic. Both ionization energies are always endothermic. Electron affinity, first one, is always exothermic. The second one is always endothermic. We'll look at why. Solution can be either, and hydration must be negative and exothermic. Again, we're going to look at them. Atomization. Now, why it is endothermic is because bonds must be broken. Now, remember, if it's solid, you have those, you have, these are um, intermolecular forces. You have them between the molecules, 
and these need to have energy put into them to break so they are endothermic. Ionization is an endo um, ionization energy is endothermic because the electron being lost has to overcome attraction from the nucleus in order to leave the atom. It needs to take in energy. And same with the second ionization energy. The first electron affinity is exothermic because the electron is attracted into the outer shell. So it's going to it's kind of almost like a bond is being made. It's not quite, but it's basically being attracted, so that means um, energy is given off. But the interesting one, the second electron affinity is endothermic because the second you add an electron in, you've then got a negative charge on that whole atom, an extra electron. So we see we have O minus, it's got, an it's got a negative charge. An electron has a negative charge, so you're trying to get a negative charge from the electron and a negative charge from the atom to kind of join together, and they don't. Like charges repel, so you need to put in energy to actually get them to bond. Then solution can be plus or negative, and as we said, hydration is negative. And now finally on this side, we're going to have another look at just again at lattice enthalpy, just so we know it's always exothermic, because lattice enthalpies have a negative sign because energy is given out when ionic bonds are being formed from gaseous ions. Lattice enthalpy indicates the strength of an ionic lattice and its measure of ionic bond strength. The more negative, the more exothermic it is, the more energy is stored in the bonds, the more it's being given out, so the stronger the bonds. A covalent substance does not have a lattice enthalpy because there are no ions in the structure, that's kind of obvious. And lattice enthalpies cannot be measured directly because it's impossible to form one mole of an ionic lattice from gaseous ions. So we're now going to look at something called a born harbour cycle. Firstly, here is an equation you need to know. Basically know that when we're looking at born harbour cycle, we'll look at one next, the enthalpy changes that go in a clockwise direction equal the enthalpy changes to go in an anti-clockwise direction. And I'll show you what that means now. I'm I've gone through two examples, make sure you have your textbook. In this book, page 196, question 1b, I've not gone through the theory question, just a practice one. And this question has given you a long, a big table of different enthalpy changes, lattice enthalpy of calcium oxide, it's all about calcium oxide. Um, ionization energy for calcium, second ionization energy for calcium, first electron affinity for oxygen, second electron affinity for oxygen, atomization for oxygen, atomization for calcium, they've missed out formation. So, this is how you construct a Born Harbor cycle. This is what it looks like. I'm sure you can all do this, just in case. So, you start, I always like to start at the bottom. At the bottom, you have your ionic lattice. Make sure you always put state symbols in here, very important. So, we have calcium oxide and it is a solid. You then go up one level, as you can see you start at one calcium oxide, then at step two, you have, this is, this is from step two to one, it's the only one where you kind of have it going the other way, from step two to one you have the formation. So here you can see calcium naturally a solid, plus half O2, because oxygen is naturally a gas and it's diatomic, those, those two together will form calcium oxide, which is the solid, that's formation, but we don't know that. Now, from step two to three, you're atomizing calcium, so calcium solid becoming calcium gas. From step three to four, oxygen is being atomized. So that's going from o, half O2 to just O on its own, just single O. From calcium gas and oxygen gas, you then do the first ionization energy and calcium loses an electron. Make sure you add in the electron. Then from step five to six, you're losing another electron, so calcium two plus. And then from step six to seven, you are g giving those electrons to oxygen. So oxygen's now got one electron, but there's still one electron there. The second one, you add that second electron to oxygen, so it's O2 minus. So we've now got calcium two plus and o oxygen two minus in a gaseous state, and we have the lattice enthalpy from eight to nine. Now, in this question, we've been given lattice enthalpy because it's obviously a known value. But in reality, if you're doing it experimentally, you wouldn't have that. You'd have to work out the others. And then it says, work out the enthalpy change of formation. We've been lucky here. If we look, 2 to 3 is clockwise, 3 to 4 is clockwise, 4 to 5 is clockwise, 5 to 6 is clockwise, 6 to 7 is clockwise, 7 to 8 is clockwise, and 8 to 9 is clockwise. They're all clockwise. The only one that isn't is 2 to 1, which is anti-clockwise. So that means all the given values we have, if you add them together, you get the... Um, enthalpy change of formation. So in the corner I've written it. 
178 plus 249 plus 590 plus 1150. Minus 144, because remember it's a minus, so we take it away. Plus 798, minus Latin entropy again, 3459, it's negative. All this equals delta HF, which in this case equals minus 635 kilojoules per mole. On the diagram, I didn't draw the units to save space and time, but in the exam, do. And to note, if you have two lots of an element, example chlorine, we'll look at one next example. If you have chlorine, Cl2, so let's say you're doing mag um, calcium chloride, CaCl2, and you're going to atomize that, you have to multiply the enthalpy by 2. And you'll see that in the next example. Now this is when we use lattice enthalpy solution and hydration. Now first it's important to know what happens when a solid actually dissolves. Firstly, look at number 1. And we know that 2 to 1 is lattice enthalpy. As you can see, it's gaseous ions forming uh, its ionic lattice. Now, a solid dissolving is just the opposite. So if you were told what is, you know, um, the enthalpy change when this ionic lattice dissolves, it's just the positive value of whatever the lattice enthalpy is. So in this case, the enthalpy change of ionic dissolving lattice, or whatever it would be called, um, would be plus 2,493 kilojoules per mole. But what actually happens is, once it dissolves, each of the ions are then hydrated, as we said. So they become, instead of gaseous, become a aqueous. And this enthalpy change is known as the enthalpy change of solution. So that's what happens when an ionic lattice dissolves and is then hydrated. That's the um, enthalpy change of solution. So you dissolve them into their atoms. But if it's in solution, because remember we're dissolving it, so it means it must be happening in water, the ions will then form bonds with the water, you know, hydrogen bonds or such. Um, and then you've got these deaths being hydrated. So you have Cl minus will then um, slightly positive hydrogens from water be attracted to the negative chlorine. So we can now calculate, using the exact same method, calculate um, this. So we said the enthalpy change solution is equal to the negative value of lattice enthalpy plus the values of hydration. So the best way to draw it is, firstly draw lattice enthalpy. That's when gases ions go to the solid form, so that's 2 to 1. Then 2 to 3 is hydration of one of the ions. It doesn't matter which one first, but I've done for magnesium first. Then from 3 to 4, it's the hydration of the other ion, in this case chlorine. Now this is where it comes important. It's 2 Cl-, minus. so the value you get, you're given, which is on page 195, question 3b in the book, um, that value I've been given, you times it by 2 because it happens once for each chlorine. And then you've got both of them aqueous. In this case, again, we've been given the um, entropy change of solution, which is minus 153. So we can work out the hydration of magnesium. By doing that, again, clockwise. So we have um, 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 clockwise. 2 to 1 and 1 to 4 anti-clockwise. So those lot equal each other. So I've done 2 to 1 to 4 one side minus 200, 2,493 minus 150 equals, now remember, minus um, 363 times 2 plus hydration. So you just move them over to the other side and you get minus 1,920 kilojoules per mole is the enthalpy change of hydration. So I hope those two examples make sense. I've never actually seen one on hydration solution. I've always seen it on a full, just normal lattice enthalpy with formation all the other guff in it. I hope that make those two examples make sense. If you just follow those examples and practice, you should get it. Now, factors that affect lattice enthalpy and hydration. Now, they have these are two separate little sections in the book, but really the factors that affect lattice enthalpy are exactly the same as the factors that affect hydration. So, ionic size. As the radius of an atom increases, the attraction between the ions decrease, and lattice enthalpy becomes less negative, less exothermic. So basically, there's just weaker attraction between the ions, and hence weaker ionic bonding, because small ions can pack together closely in a lattice and attract each other strongly. Large ions are further apart in the lattice, and their force of attraction between them are weaker. So ionic size, if radius increases, so it gets bigger, attraction decreases, delta H becomes less exothermic. Equally, if the radius decreases, it becomes smaller, 
attraction will increase and delta H becomes more exothermic, stronger ionic bonds. Now ionic charge is the opposite. As charge increases, you have a stronger force of attraction, which means delta H becomes more exothermic, so stronger ionic bonds. If charge decreases, attraction decreases. Because, and you have weaker ionic bonds, so delta H becomes less exothermic. And that's all you need to know. So, conclusion. There are many different delta H you need to know and all their definitions. Um, you've got all, you've got the born harbor cycles of all the different, um, enthalpy changes, and you've got the one that just features lattice enthalpy solution hydration. Remember that the sum of the clockwise enthalpies equals the sum of the anti-clockwise enthalpies, and learn the factors that affect lattice enthalpy and enthalpy change of hydration. Again, if you, anything you don't understand, please message. Um, comment or if you if you don't like the way I'm doing these videos feel free to comment or like and subscribe if you do like them um, so I, I've been quite tired recently due to the live streaming and the amount of work I've got to do myself so if the quality has gone down in these videos I am awfully sorry please tell me and I will work hard I am trying my best at the moment but if there's something I can do to improve them please tell me so thank you for watching and goodbye